Yo, what it is, YouTube? It's your boy Nitsa coming back with another Bullseye of a video here today on the channel. I wanted to speak about is distortion truly a bad thing? I think there's a misconception amongst like the younger crowd of people who making music. Usually when we think about distortion, we thinking about digital distortion. Ooh, that's bad. That's gonna make my music sound bad. But I wanted to go and talk a little bit today about the other side of distortion, which is kind of like the analog distortion, the way it breaks up. It could give us a lot of weight, a lot of chest, a lot of tone in our music music that might um, you know help bring things to life help the music kind of jump off of the page so the unit that I have right here is the uh, UAD culture virtue I think this is a very interesting unit because it was kind of like one of those very first units that put an emphasis on two valve distortion so many of these plugins that we like to use like the CL1B um, they have like the input and the output is pretty much using tubes and the, the sound of the tube is very important and sometimes even when you overdrive that tube when you hit it with a high level it can be actually very pleasing or give you kind of a, a, a kind of like a human like reaction so let's look into this a little bit further one of the things that I always think about is some like the Fairchild 660 and the way that it kind of gives you the opportunity to turn off the threshold and only use the input gain to give some of that distortion depending on like the hardware and the type of tube that they're using sometimes that tool could even give you a little bit more clarity a little bit more air so another one of the things that I was thinking about too is something like the Aphex Oral Exciter which is another tube unit originally when people used to be recording stuff stuff back in the day with analog they would kind of lose a little bit of fidelity as that tape you know it would go on the shelf and everything like that after a couple months after a couple weeks you know the tape would literally start it's kind of like dampening the high end and they would literally lose some of the brightness of some of the um, some of the clarity so the Aphex was one of those um, units that kind of came in there and kind of like sonically enhancing those tracks and then another one of the things I think about modern wise is the decapitator which gives you a bunch of different styles of actual like distortion and we got to understand that the most important thing I want to talk about today is triode and pento tubes so with the triode tubes I use this uh, analogy to remind myself is are you trying to even get fat because that type of example I'm making is the, the trial tubes actually give you even order harmonics which can uh, just make the whole kind of signal sound very richer kind of has like a tape warming characteristics a little bump in the uh, you know the lower register and a little smoothing of the high so that's what triode is and then how I remember pentode is uh, kind of pent up anger so the pentode is a lot more aggressive it can give a lot of more bite a lot a lot more grit and everything so that brings us back to the culture vulture and the culture vulture is a pretty interesting unit it emphasizes two valve distortion when this originally came out people were seeing it more like as an effect type of thing but you know down the line of using digital as people kind of took for granted what analog was giving them even though the analog it had a lot of problems it was still giving a lot of life it was giving a lot of juice a lot of sauce um you know the older engineers who've been making a little transition to the newer you know pro tools and everything like that newer setup they finding themselves having to do more parallel compression more saturation all that stuff they never had to do back in the day because the equipment the, the overall signal flow and the console was giving them some collective distortion even though it is quote-unquote distortion it was a pleasant distortion even our human ear is used to distortions our human ear is not used to listening to a steady consistent sound because that's not how the world around us is there's always a car moving or people talking or, or feet you know feet clamping to the ground so our, our ear is literally used to distortion but we got to understand that we can take the pleasant type of distortion and juice up our tracks so let's listen to uh, the material that I got right here and let's listen to how I brought it in I better my mind to sense It's better for me in the end Every time we spin the block A nigga start getting them flashbacks Every time I try to take a step forward Out of hood it feel like a nigga running to a set Back gon' finesse a nigga he won't get his cash Back now I'm bringing up the plug I need a gas pack If she ever talk about her ex Then my nigga that's a red flag and let's look at a couple of the controls inside of the culture vulture it's actually funny i remember a couple years ago people were calling drake a culture vulture and i feel like maybe somebody was in the studio and they saw one of these units and you know that's just kind of a thing i remember that's the first time i ever heard of culture vulture so that name just kind of stuck out to me but the most important thing right here is this kind of a tube valve distortion unit it gives us the option between three types of distortion it gives us the drive right here we have to understand that the bias uh current is something that's very important as well here um the, it actually works reverse so if 
you want more of the bias, you gotta go um, reverse, which will give you like kind of like a more fuller um, sound. Or if you go to the right, it will actually like decrease the bias. So when I think of the bias current, I'm actually starting to think of the 1176. Because when you click the all buttons in mode on 1176, that actually has something to do to change the bias current as well. So bias current is a pretty interesting thing. You guys should look into it. But that's kind of what gives it the, um, the distortion characteristics. When you push the all buttons in on 1176, it's not just about the compressor action, but also about the um, the distortion that you get. You're getting a different type of color, a different type of life to it. And you also have the filters right here. I generally don't use the filters, but it's also amazing. And then we have a couple of new modern controls like the mix knob. But let's listen to how I use the triode tool to beef up this vocal and make it sit inside the track a little bit better, not having to do EQ or compression. But this distortion, you gotta understand that distortion does have some type of compression characteristic that cannot really be truly measured. But what it does for sure though, is that it definitely is like an instantaneous compression that's very natural and very pleasing to the ear. Let's listen to it with and without. Is that better my mind to sense? It's better for me in the end. Every time we spin the block, a nigga start getting them flashbacks. Every time I try to take a step forward out of hood, it feel like a nigga running to a setback. Gonna finesse a nigga, he won't get his cash back. Now I'm bringing up the plug, I need a gas pack. If she ever talk about her ex, then my nigga, that's a red flag. Is that better my mind to sense? It's better for me in the end. Every time we spin the block, a nigga start getting them flashbacks. Every time I try to take a step forward out of hood, it feel like a nigga running to a setback. Gonna finesse a nigga, he won't get his cash back. Now I'm bringing up the plug, I need a gas pack. If she ever talk about her ex, then so it definitely sounds very good. Kind of sounds like I made a slight EQ move, but you just hear how the song is just sitting a little bit better. It sounds a little clearer, a little bit more clear. Even though the vocal was finished being processed, I used a little bit of saturation to give it a little bit of that bright, that little bit of sparkle, a little bit of that magic, a little bit of that wand, you know? And it's it's very interesting. I feel like the CL1B is another one of those things that also gives me that effect. Even when I turn off the CL1B and I don't use it, I just use it as like, just to hit it and get some of that tube sound. I feel like it's giving me some clarity, some magic. Same thing goes with a pull tech. So I'm trying to help you guys really just understand today that um, tubes are amazing and distortion is something that you should not put to the side just because you see a plugin says distortion and you're thinking of digital distortion, just know there is some definite definite benefits to it and lastly i want to show you how the um, thermionic culture vulture sounds like on the whole entire mix and the culture vulture is pretty interesting what it does to a bass at 808 i think that even if you tried to use this guys if you demo it what it can do for your 808 or a two track beat is it can definitely juice it up but specifically when i'm thinking about the decapitator people love that for the 808 distortion is amazing uh, and what what it does with the overtones you know it can kind of like pull out some of the note of the 808 you know because the 808 is not just all sub there's usually a little bit of click or some other things kind of going on in the upper mid range that if you use saturation rather than the eq it can bring it out to life it can make the 808 actually sound a little bit louder than what it what it really was so let's pay attention to how I use the um, culture vulture to just juice up this whole mix. Is that better my mind to sense? It's better for me in the end. Every time we spin the block, a nigga start getting them flashbacks. Every time I try to take a step forward out of hood, it feel like a nigga running to a setback. Gonna finesse a nigga, he won't get his cash back. Now I'm bringing up the plug, I need a gas pack. If she ever talk about her ex, then my nigga, that's a red flag. I don't, I don't got time for no blues coming from you unless we talking about the ones in your pocket. My niggas been popping them shots out them ops up and pumping no bills. They couldn't even stop it. Disappear safe for niggas who don't want to M. Shot it like an angel, but she got it. I done got it off slabs, then I got it off the whim Jimmy, true what I choose, I just really wanna get him I don't know what to believe no more Like everything I hear is a lie to my face I don't wanna give out the benefit of the doubt I done seen what she on and I seen what she bro. Every time I think about these streets and make a nigga my my own biz I better my mind to sense It's better for me in the end I don't know what to believe no more Like everything I hear is a lie to my face I don't wanna give out the benefit of the doubt I done seen what she on and I seen what she got Every time I think about these streets and make a nigga my my own pins I better my mind to sense better
So you hear what the saturation is doing. You hear what the distortion is doing. It's, it's making the 808 literally more definitive. So I think that saturation is an incredible way to actually enhance the low end of a, not only just the vocal, but an entire mix as well, especially in hip hop, where you don't really have that much control over the two track beat. Sometimes maybe that 808 sounding a little bit flat. Maybe you might want to take a saturator, maybe Saturn, or even the um, Thermionic Culture Vulture, which I love a lot, to just enhance everything. I know a situation where sometimes maybe the frequencies are balanced completely but you want a little bit more density, a density, a little bit more weight. And even then with this type of saturation, it has a very soothing, de-harsh kind of thing that it kind of does when you use the triode specifically. So this is kind of the end of the video today. I just wanted to tell you guys to keep your mind open, especially when it comes to the word distortion, because it can kind of mean, uh, you know, like, like many other words in the you know music game, it can mean a bunch of things to a bunch of different people. But I'm just letting you know that some of these compressors, EQs, all of these things like the EQP 1A or the Fairchild or whatever, you know, the input and the output stage, what it has in it is also very important as to why we love it. So you should always be trying to pay attention to that stuff to help you improve your sound, you know? Just because it says distortion, don't be like, oh, well, it's distortion, I can't use it. Because it could really maybe be the missing element to your music. Just want to say thanks a lot for being a great part of my YouTube family. I do appreciate y'all. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Any more ideas for videos, drop it down below. Appreciate it now. Peace.